there was an individual by the name of Jimmy Lee Jackson, who was a part of the Night March in Marion, Alabama, which is not far from Selma. His grandfather, Cajun Lee, and his mother were a part of the demonstration. There was a police riot, and the state troopers started to beat people. And they chased a, a bunch of folks into a, ca a local cafe, and the state troopers assaulted Jimmy Lee Jackson's mother. He came to her aid, and they shot him. And eventually, he stumbles out of the cafe and dies. And James Bevel, who's working with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference at SCLC, recommends that they take the body of Jimmy Lee Jackson and walk it up Highway 80 and place it at the steps of the state capitol as a protest against the policies of Alabama, but also of Governor Wallace. That idea morphs into what becomes the Selma to Montgomery March. We were determined that we were going to march from Selma to Montgomery. We left the Brown Chapel Church here and went down to the Edmund Pettus Bridge with the expectation of marching across that bridge on the way to Montgomery. Here we are in Selma, Alabama. They are praying before they march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. There's John Lewis, later a congressman, Hosea Williams. There's Andrew Young, former UN ambassador. There's the Edmund Pettus Bridge, and they're marching across. Here we are, what's waiting on the other side of the bridge, Alabama State Troopers. That Confederate flag on the front of that trooper car written there by happenstance. A person with a bullhorn said he had orders from the governor not to allow that march to continue. We were asked to disperse, go back to our homes or back to the church. And if not, we would actually be moved. And we had decided we were not going to turn unless we were turned. The troopers knew there was going to be some trouble, so they put their gas mask on. They stop and they face the troopers. As the head of the state troopers, Major John Cloud, tells them to disperse, well, they don't disperse. And when they don't disperse, the troopers go wild. So he gave orders for the state troopers to move in on with their billy clubs clutched on both ends and literally went down the line of marches, topping us over. I saw blood flowing. Pandemonium broke out in the crowd, a state of disbelief that this was happening in these United States of America. Here's John Lewis being brutally assaulted by the Alabama State Troopers, as are all the other people who were there peacefully protesting for the right to vote. The marchers are assaulted by an array of law enforcement officers, and that is beamed across the nation and across the world as the forces in Alabama try to turn back the idea that black people wanted to participate in the political process. Getting back to that church from whence we had come, I looked into the face of those persons who were able to get back to Brown Chapel Church. Some were beaten on the highway across the bridge. And as I looked into their faces, I saw again a determination that we were ready to really give whatever it took in order to get that right to vote, to participate, to determine the destiny of our lives. Selma to Montgomery March is the culmination of a long struggle for voting rights that triggers a, a national outcry. Bloody Sunday is beamed across the nation and across the world as the forces in Alabama are trying to turn back the idea that black people wanted to participate in the political process. Now, we had the right to march from Selma to Montgomery and to be protected. The governor, the sheriff department, and others would not interfere. The march starts in Selma, crosses the Edmund Pettus Bridge, and makes it the 54 miles up through Lowndes County. 
down Highway 80. All the way to, to Montgomery. And all the time we would stop to rest. Some brought food. It meant that some people were so determined to assist us. I was 11 years old in the sixth grade, and my sixth grade class, we cleaned up at the campsites. My class was part of the cleanup crew. They camped out overnight for four different nights. They had a crew that would dismount the tents, pack them up and move them up to the next campsite. They had a crew that did the same thing with the kitchen, the food, utensils and all that. Also, there were whites who were determined to holler and discourage those persons who were white who were participating in the march. But during the course of this campaign, even before the march is finished, Lyndon Baines Johnson takes to the airwaves before a joint session of Congress and announces that he's going to put before Congress a voting rights bill. It was a great feeling of accomplishment, knowing that we had done something that we felt would be beneficial to all persons, regardless of their color, whether they were black, white, red, or yellow. You felt that something great was being accomplished. You just felt that there was an enormous happiness and an enormous joy that you had finally arrived, that even though all those things had gone against you, you was finally there. Moving down Dexter Avenue in Montgomery to the very right March Jose Williams holding his daughter. I marched next to him. Mrs. King marched next to me. Dr. King marched next to his wife. Dr. Ralph Bunch, the first African American Nobel Peace Prize winner, marched next to him. And to his right marched Mrs. Abernathy. To her right marched her husband, Ralph Abernathy. And to his right marched John Lewis, who today is the United States Congress from Georgia. And to his right marched A. Philip Randolph. On the way to the Capitol to hear Dr. King make that speech that day. It culminates with Martin Luther King's iconic speech at the steps of the state capitol, where he asks, how long, not long? I sat on that platform, and looked out over that sea of humanity. I don't know how many thousand people were there, but I had a feeling of great triumph and victory. For now, all persons, regardless of their color, would have a right to participate in the political process that govern their lives.